Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with lesson eight of learning to draw the poses you want. I got that. I almost forgot it. So let's get on with this. This one's kind of a quick lesson. Yeah. All right. And welcome back to lesson number eight. I believe it is eight. And we're, we are, we are uh, narrowing it down or, 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 or winding down, so to say. So last lesson I talked about a big thing, which was um, how to take a stick figure and turn it into this. Go back and look at that one. If you are, are drawing stick figures, if you say to yourself you can't draw, go back and look at this because it takes about just a few seconds to actually go from a stick figure to this figure. Computer, set alarm for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. And I, I cut it down from 25 minutes, 30 minutes to 25 minutes, because I might say something at the end of the video. And just because you might have just tuned into this video and not seen the other ones, let me show you the stick figure, because I think that's really important for people that really can't, they say they can't draw. Everybody can draw. Yeah, I know it's blurred. Everybody can draw, but because they never really put time into it, they say they can't draw. It's like, I think everybody can ride a bike, but you just have to put time into it, time and energy. So if this is your stick figure like this, and use a pen for that. Here's your stick figure, boom, like this. Your head, your legs, like this. Okay, that's your average stick figure that people do. First of all, you wanna keep, you don't wanna arm, leg, arm way down here like this. You wanna keep it, you know, proportion. So change that, change the way you do stick figures. I'm gonna use this because I'm gonna change it. So you still have the body, which is this. Put a T right here, the letter T, capital T. Put a, down here at the bottom, put a I. So basically a small I, so you have the, the sh If you have two T's or you have a capital I, erase this one, erase that one, make this smaller, okay? There you go, you still have the head. Take this, you don't want this too far out, take this, Put an arm here, put an arm here, put a leg there, put a leg there, okay? So you have a different type of, of um, stick figure. So now go up, make that into a box. From these points, bring it down here. Then from this is your center line, want this and this. And then your arms coming down from here to here. Shut that off right there, shut that off. Cut that off right there. Put a half a triangle for the foot, half a triangle for the foot, and then over for the hand. Cut that off here, over for the hand. So you just went from a stick figure to this, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, just because, is I'm gonna raise that head up a little bit more. Still have that center line. Put two lines on the side of it here, right there. Then from here, put a triangle, half a triangle, half a triangle there. Man's looking better already. And then from there, you just want to round it off a little bit. Like you, you did the upside down house. So you want to do this and you don't have to do that, but you can do that. Add a little bit more meat to the leg. Find out where your, your center is for your knee. Shape that up a little bit. Same thing here, you can put uh, the circle right here. We'll just round this off and then find the center for that. You can do your little your point here and then curve that. Find your center where your elbow is going to turn. Put a little V and then curve that. Make this around here. And then you have your man. And if you want to put the muscles in there, remember the upside down mountain. Line over top of that, and that turns into your chest. You can bring this down if you choose. And that's the beginning. And let's give this cat some lats. And then you have your man. And that only took a few seconds to do. So let me ink this. Just because. And this is for those people that say, oh, I cannot draw. Now you know that you can draw. Slow down, Brian. So you have this, that, that separates your bicep from your tricep. There's a little V right there, curve, and then your hand. How you do your hand like that. 
There's a little latch going on. It's going to come straight down now, right there. There's your separation. Your knee, your other knee, bring it in and out, in and out, in and out. And if this is your first time, it doesn't, it's not going to be perfect, so don't, don't think, you know, it's going to be perfect. But now you know the steps to making a more muscular or taking your stick figure that you only had and then turning it into a nice figure. Okay, so there you go. So never say, I can't draw. Okay, just do your T. A little bit right here. Arm, leg, leg. Arm, arm. Head. Square. Bring it down, bring it down. Bring your arms down, bring your arms down. Bring your leg down, bring your leg down. Uh, your foot. And then neck, neck. Triangle, half triangle, half triangle. Hands. And then just just shape that up a little bit more. You don't have to have the legs spread apart like that. You can have the legs close together. But usually in the stick man, everybody always spreads the legs apart. You can have the legs close together. The guy's standing, you know, standing like a boss, like that. So yeah, there you go. Sorry to push that off camera. Now what was I gonna say? Um, oh, a lot of times too, when I'm drawing small characters, I don't I don't do this, and then do that and then add the legs however I want to add the legs I'll just do one piece like if somebody's like bending over a table or something I'll just do that you it takes time or practice and then once I get the care like I'll say like this here this guy is like leaning on a table or something like that like that here's a table here's a desk or something maybe he's Fussing at the boss who's like sitting here is like, dude, dude, chill out. Like that. So it's a lot of square. Let me fix up this desk so you can actually get a um, uh, kind of image of what I'm saying. So without doing this, this is this is basically what I'm going to do if I am doing my comics. So from there, once I get that and I know the balance is right and everything is good, then I will go back, I'll do my center line and then I'll, I'll start to round it off. I'll say, okay, this is going to be the rib cage here. This is going to be this part here. Then I'll throw my legs in the right way. And then my shoulder here, shoulder, my delts, my arm. He just banged on the table, boom. I want fool you better give me a raise it's gonna be hell up in here so yeah that's just a geek in me coming out then I will do that so now I have that then I will um, draw whatever anatomy I may need if the person is like naked but times like this then I would put clothes on them but just for the sake of, of arguments we're doing this shoulder And I'm not even gonna try to put the muscles in there. Just, just do the open. And what do I have here? This is the other arm right here. Like that. Then I'll go the same way with the other guy. I'll do this. I'll say, okay, he's leaning, so the center line is going to be here. This is going to be that. You're not going to see the waist. This is the circle. This is going to be the cylinder, and there's going to be another cylinder on top of that to give it that um, perspective kind of look for shortening. Should I say that's what I was trying to say? Then you get the circle here, here, and then the cylinder here. Let me let me ink this. So you have this. You have that cylinder here. And then you have that cylinder there, and then you have his hand on the desk. And same thing here, you have that there, that cylinder goes in there, and that cylinder comes in front of that. And then that hand is like right there, like, dude, dude, chill. So that's an easy way to do your comics. You don't have to, 
draw every muscle every time this is good enough when you start out like this then like i say stuff something like that i put clothes on the guy shirt or jacket or whatever and then you won't need you won't see muscles you will never see the muscles because it was never intended to show the muscles so you don't have to really worry about you know, oh, is this right? Is this right? Because I'm covering all this stuff up anyway. Seam in that jacket like this. And a lot of this is, as I say, it's just, it's just practice, 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 practice. And this guy, let's just say he got a tie, a suit and he's got a little tie on, however a tie is. And it's just it's hanging down because his jacket is open because the guy startled him. He's like, come on, Johnny. How long have you worked here? And how does that look like that? Yeah, so yeah, and then your shirt like that. And your thumb is gonna be, where's the thumb on the outside? No, it's gonna be on the inside. Yeah, so you don't always have to Draw the muscle every time. You don't have to do that. I'm the boss. The boss, baby. Yeah, what else was I say? Yeah, so once we have this established, if I'm dressing this character, I don't have to have every cut in the chest, every, you know, bit separation in that or the arms that's just you know veined out and uh the muscle in the legs because if i'm putting pants on it you're wasting your time and when you're doing comic books time is the most important thing especially when you realize there are thing called deadlines deadlines will make or break you if you ever get a job with somebody doing somebody's book and they have to get it to the inker at a certain time they have to get it to the colorist at a certain time you cannot play around and not have your stuff ready. For example, um, someone wrote me the other day and he asked, he said he wanted to start his comic book, but he's not that great a drawer, so what can he do first? So I told him, the first thing you need to do is get your story, write your story, okay? Your story has, like, so his one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six or six characters, let's just say six characters. You have to have a name for all these characters, N-A-M-E, you have a name for this character, you have to have an origin for these characters, you have to have your power for these characters. So that takes time alone. Okay, so what type of personality do these people have? He's a happy person, he's a sad person, he's an angry person, he's a joker, he's a, he's a, he's a thief, he's a boss. Uh, so you have to do that. All your characters, get all your characters, everything about him. So if I asked you, who is that? Oh, this is Sally, 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 Sally Lou. Okay, Sally Lou was from Hawaii. Okay, Brian, that's just like kind of racist. Sally Lou, that she could be from Chicago. All right, this is Sally Lou is a Hawaiian name? I don't know. So anyway, she's this old. Uh, she was born here. Um, she works here. Her boss's name is this. She lives in an apartment, one bedroom apartment. She has a cat named Tom. So all of that stuff you have to figure out for every single person that is in your story. It takes time. Comic books is no joke. If you really want to do a comic book, it's no joke. Look at some of these. If you play video games, look at the, 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 the detail that goes into like the, the cities you know, and the history of the cities and the, the old kings and the old queens and the sons of the king. So it's a lot to do when you are doing a comic book. So you have to have all that. 
So you get all you got all your characters. Then where are they at? They're in New York. Okay, they're in New York. What part of New York? It could be a, or it could be a different world, whatever you know, Argentinian or something. So um, what's the year? What year are they in? So basically, you get all of that story together. Okay, then you start designing what they look like. Okay, she has a beard. Yes, she has a beard because that's just who she is. She has a beard and like, you know, really big, heavy boobs or something. And, you know, small feet. Because that's just who she is. And a, and a long, long hair because, you know, her family just had long hair and beards. All right, so you design what they look like. You already got their powers, their names, their origins, and so forth. You know where they live at. You know what they do. Now, once you have all that down, which is going to take some time, you already have your story down, start roughing out your story. What can you see? Like if, 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 if I'm doing a story and I'm going step by step, this is the beginning of the story. This is the opening of the story. Um, Sally Lou is sitting under a tree. So just start sketching these little things out. You might not be able to draw and say, okay, this is a tree right here and this is this is Sally Lou sitting under the tree here that is like panel number one panel number two Sally Lou sees a bird or something so panel as best as you can draw here's a bird and then you have a close-up of her she's looking at this bird like that you know so all these things you even if you can't see the ones just like say okay this is this is my first panel this is my second panel. This is my third panel. This is my fourth panel. Just kind of go out with it. You know, think about whatever you see. And it could, like I said, just rough. And if it's just really stupid rough, then put down Sally Lou under the tree. Sees the bird. Okay, because you already have your story written out. Your story includes the dialogue. It should have all that stuff before you even start drawing. So the time that you're writing your story and putting your stuff together, you could practice drawing. Go back and look at one of these videos that this great teacher named Brian Proctor does, and it'll teach you how to draw. And while you're writing a story on these other days, you could be, you know, working on your character, you know, sketches or your body sketches. <clears throat> also, while you're doing that, start finding reference material. So like, She's in an apartment. Go and, you know, find some interior apartment pictures online or cut out some stuff. Um, where's the paper? If I still have that paper. Cut out some stuff in the magazines. I had a thing about, no, here it is. Like uh, furniture, these like like Haverty's or whatever these little um, things are. And it's like, say, okay, I could use that for a bedroom. So cut that out. You know, keep that in a folder. If you don't have it, get it online. You know, cut little pictures out so her dining room, her dining room could look like this. This is how I want her dining room. Cut all these pictures out and then save them. So when it's time for you to draw, when you get a better drawing and then you say, okay, now I can start drawing because, you know, I'm better at it. You already have the reference pictures to make it a lot easier. Cut out pictures of a tree. You know, later on you're going to say, okay, I want a different angle of the tree. Maybe I want an upshot of the tree. And that's just, you know, that's just um, from you practicing while you're writing a story. Because it takes a while. It's going to probably take a year before you get a, a, a story done. And it's like Sally, you know, sitting under the tree. Remember, Sally's got big boobs. So that's going to show up. And she's like looking up at the bird. I'll just put a leg right here. And the other leg right here. So she's like on the ground. And there's the bird over here. It's, no, that's panel two, though. Let's just say there's panel one. She's under the tree and there's birds flying. And then there's a fat bird. There's just one bird in particular that's just fat. And see, this is this is story writing because you can change. You'll change as you go along. So this is like one big fat bird and you got little wings. And all other birds are like slim because they were like on Jenny Craig diet plan or something. So here's that one fat bird and he's sweating up a storm. He's like, oh, Jesus, this is I'm too fat to fly and then his little legs so yeah that's why I love comics because I come up with this crazy stuff you got your story you got your dialogue remember when you do your panel always have room for your dot your word balloon always have room because you, if you do so much detail on this tree 
So let's just say I'm doing all these leaves in this tree. So this is a tight looking tree. This tree is so tight, you know, even have like a couple leaves falling out the tree. And then I come along and I say, okay, my word balloon is going to be right here. So all that detail, I just, you know, it was a waste of my time. And again, once, I, once again, it's time is most important in a comic book. Because you can do your first comic, it take maybe like take two years to get your first comic book out. And everybody's like, oh, this is great, this is great. And you put your second one out, six months later, people, we done forgot about you. So you have to have your panel. You have to say, okay, my word balloon is going to go here, imaginary. And then you have your tree, you know, and, you know, Sally looking there. And so it won't disturb it. So then you have your birds here. So that's just something else to think about. And where did that one go? And um, 20 minutes. Do not forget, you can do this a lot. You can do, you know, the... Um, do that you don't have to have especially if you're dressing them you don't have to have the traditional thing you know if you know this guy's going to have armor the only thing I would do here is if it's a guy I'd slim him down like that and then maybe do the V here that way I can keep track of the legs. Then I'll put my armor on the guy. Or however, whatever you want to choose to put on the person. But of course you got to round it off to make it look a little better than, than you know, than this. Yeah. What else? It was something else I had in my notes that I did not get to last time, but I think that was basically it. Your balance, your, oh, okay. Once you get stuff together and you, you don't want to have your, your character, all your characters just straightforward, you know, just he's, he's, all my characters are standing straightforward. You want to give some a little bit of um, not a perspective to it, but anyway, you just take them and you do something like this, and you put them on these lines, and you could go the other way as well. So, the f usually I'll do this. I put the shoulders on this line, and I have the feet on that line. So, I'm just just do, do a quick quick rough do a quick rough and it's kind of hard because it's not enough line for a actual person so I have the feet or like the heel on this line and you should curve that I might have to cut this one because it's not coming out the way I want to but I'm going to keep going anyway And it's always from the sides. You can't do it from the you can't do it from the front. Same thing with this one. And I still can't think of the name I'm trying to I'm trying to say. But I always put the shoulders on that line, not the head. Some people will put the head there. I put the shoulders there. But by doing that, you have that impressive stance. And getting some curve to it like that so but it has to be on this line it's like a perspective line because your vanishing point is here and you can do another guy you know down here same thing or almost the same thing a different kind of stance but as long as their shoulders are on that line and their feet are, or their heel will be on that line, or you can have the toe on that line. They, it's more impressive. It's like if, if I had some more guys here, like if it was a team, I'd have that, that perspective, and I'd have the other guys right here. Like 
Then I would do this. If it got too carried away, I'll do that. Then we keep that curve. If somebody was standing in the middle, then you would have to put them straight. I bring them down a little bit. He's too, he's too, too long, too high. guy and if this guy wasn't leaning like that you can put him straight forward computer stop alarm shocked and then he would be he wouldn't be on that line or she but just by using this line And you stop talking. I know. I don't know why I stopped talking. You have that dramatic stance. Keeping the feet on that same line, except for anybody that is forward like this. He's a leader, so he's gonna be in the front. Same thing with this guy. Don't spit on your paper, Brian. Like he's leaning like his back hurt. He's the old man. He's like, oh Lord, my back is hurting. Here's his cane right here. But he's still posing because he's a boss. So yeah, he's got <laughs> that's the old cat. Old cat got good powers. And then of course there's one more right here. He's straight too. And the heads can be on the same line after, but I usually put the shoulders on the line because there's no there's no questioning about the height of that. So yeah, it's just this is this is once you get the body together, then you start posing them because you want to show off your characters or you want to show off your yeah your character design or your team or whatever. So we'll get more into that. And um, what time? 20, it's because I said that for 25 minutes, but I drew for another minute. So I'm going to let this one go as in, as in not drawing a figure because that's, that would be the hardest part of doing this teaching. The teaching part is easy. It's trying to figure out these just random figure drawings that I usually do at the end of all of these things. And I'm trying to find one, like maybe the last one. Yeah, this guy or the other guy. That's the hard part about doing this because I have to see it in my head to be able to just put it down on paper, you know, like this guy, or let that be the lesson. So yeah, I got a lot of papers here because I'm keeping all these papers, all these things I've done for you guys. I'm keeping all these just because. So that's gonna be it for this video. Let me pretend I just finished this guy up. Oh yeah, so then you bring your knee and your foot and your arm and boom, there you go. So. That's it for this video. Throw my pens down. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you learned something. So I'm hoping you are learning something. Write me, let me know. Oh, I never say this. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking this stuff because YouTube definitely looks at this stuff. And subscribe. And I think that's it. Notification bell. I'm going to try to get one video up a day until we end this little series. So I'm thinking it's getting close to being wrapped up. I just have to think about some things that I might have missed of showing you to help you kind of twist and turn the body a little bit more. And if something that you think about that you say, oh, this is a good series, but you need to add this, write me and tell me and I'll see if I can throw it in if it's, if it's, if it's feasible. 
and somebody asked me to do like how to do robots and mechs and I'm working on that you know it's kind of hard I was going to do a little piece here but I'm working on that and somebody else asked me to do twists and turns action and I think it's going to be a separate separate video so that's it don't want pencils out they're already out I'll see you guys in the next video